to the annual State of the City Address for the City of Marion, brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Lynn County. I'm Amy Reisner, a volunteer member of the League. Nationally, the League of Women Voters' vision is empowering voters, defending democracy. And our very own League of Women Voters of Lynn County, comprised of both men and women, achieves that vision by promoting discourse between government representatives and community members, educating and advocating for our community on issues of common good, and sharing unbiased, fact-based information. See our website for more information about our legislative and candidate forums. The League is pleased to recognize and thank the following community sponsors for Marion's State of the City. Gold Level, Shuttleworth and Ingersoll, Mid-American Energy, Alliant Energy, the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation, and ITC. Silver, Lynch Dallas PC, the City of Cedar Rapids Utilities Managers, Cedar Rapids Iowa City Building Trades and Hawkeye Area Labor Council, H.R. Green, Collins Aerospace, Simmons, Perrine, Moyer, and Bergman, and Blue Sky Productions. Please stay with us at the conclusion of the mayor's remarks and after the credits roll for a live question and answer session. If you have questions that you'd like to pose, please submit them by using the chat function in the webinar. It is now my honor to introduce Marion Mayor Nick Aboasili. Mayor Nick graduated from Linmar High School and earned degrees in finance and law at the University of Iowa. He worked as an in-house attorney for Exxon Corporation in Houston, Texas, but he was eventually drawn back to the Eastern Iowa area in order to be near his family, and he wanted the opportunity to live in a community where he could make a greater impact. Since returning to the area in 1995, he has been involved in all aspects of community development and leadership in both Marion and Cedar Rapids. He served on the Marion City Council for two and a half years before his election to the office of mayor in November 2015. And he began his second term as mayor in January 2020. Mayor Nick is a 29-year attorney, and I thought that said 29 years old, but I'm pretty sure it's 29-year attorney and partner at Simmons Perrine Moyer Bergman Law Firm, where he heads up the real estate law department. He is included on the list's Best Lawyers in America and Great Plains Super Lawyers. He has been on the Quarter Business Journal's list of the most influential people in the quarter for four consecutive years, topping the list in 2018 and again in 2020. He was also the 2019 recipient of the National Council on Youth Leadership's Visionary Youth Leadership Award. He is an advocate for progress in Marion and the region. Please help me welcome Mayor Nick. Good afternoon. Thank you, Amy. And thanks to the League of Women Voters for partnering with us on this event. And thank you to all who are joining us for this very special edition of the annual Marion State of the City Address. This year's event is unlike any we've had. In place of our annual banquet, we're broadcasting live today from Marion's newest point of pride, this spectacular YMCA and Community Rec Center. It's always a great pleasure for me to present the state of our city on behalf of the City Council and City Administration and our staff of more than 230 women and men who work hard every day to serve Marion's residents and help them to enjoy an unequaled quality of life. I'm especially proud to provide a recap of 2020, a year which by any measure was truly extraordinary. It was a year marked by unexpected challenges, yet defined by an amazing and resilient community determined to persevere and succeed. For several years, Marion has been charting a clear course of progress founded on simple ideas, serving the needs of people and giving them and businesses great opportunities and potential to achieve their goals here. At its onset, 2020 held great promise for significant progress on this path. But little did we know that it would also be a year of successive challenges that affected each one of us and changed our lives in a profound way. These challenges weren't predicted or in our control, but how we chose to confront them made all the difference for our community. We can all be proud of Marion's unified response 
in the face of a historic natural disaster that occurred in the midst of an unprecedented global public health crisis. The combined effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the derecho storm could have easily overwhelmed us and brought us to our knees. But defeat is not in Marion's DNA. And we were determined to achieve a different outcome as we addressed each and every challenge day by day, hour by hour, always with the well-being of people at the forefront and always leveraging the power of community to help Marion's residents and businesses make it through this difficult period as successfully as possible. In the process, we showed the world the strength of Marion and we defined true community. Let's watch this video. It's funny to laugh about now because we were so prepared for having a normal year and then it all just came crashing down in March. I wear a mask because I want to protect my patients, my coworkers, and my community. I'm trying to make sure that people are safe in an environment where some people felt it was nothing and some people were, you know, why aren't you just shutting everything down? And my approach was to stress the shared responsibility of all of us to do our part, make sure that we keep each other safe and that we help each other through this as a community. And to me, that's what defines community. We've seen other communities lose businesses and we haven't lost that many businesses and the couple that we have lost really haven't been related to the pandemic. What's made our Marion businesses so successful is that they were ready to roll up their sleeves from day one to figure this out. It was just great to be able to reach out to our business owners and have those personal conversations. They, you know, let us know about what their concerns were and then that allowed us to tailor some of our programming, making sure that people started feeling more comfortable shopping online and doing curbside pickup. You are. Thank yeah, you. So we preach shop local every year. This last year, we were pushing that every single day in so many different ways, and the community really saw why that was so important for them to support their local businesses. Everything from community cash program that we did, just to our social media, that you need to get out there, and if you want these businesses to be open next year, you, you'll spend your money there regardless. Hey, stop back again. I will. Opening a business is a long shot, even in the best of times, so how we've done and how the community has supported us and just all that um, far exceeds where I would have even set my expectations. The city in general has been super supportive, very helpful, even in just coming by just like, hey, how's it going? That's the like one-on-one -on -one interaction, you know, that, um, yeah, that I don't think you really get in a big city. Since the pandemic started, so much has changed for us. And we are just grateful to be at a place that is so community focused and kind of trying to rally around all of the circumstances. So I just feel a lot of gratitude in that respect. Marion is a community that has always loved its events. We knew right away that in a really strange year where nothing was gonna be the same, we had to provide some normalcy and events was one way that we could do that. So we kind of flipped things on their ear with the market, moving it, making that accessible and available to people. We took Uptown Get Down on the road. We were really feeling maybe even a little cocky about being able to pull off all of our summer events that we were so proud of during an international pandemic. And then derecho hit and that took us down. Handling the derecho was one of the toughest things I have ever done. We train for tornadoes. We train for storms. And tornadoes usually just take a path through a town or a county. This derecho took the whole county. So all we could do is the best we could do. And we did very, very well. I was very proud that day. It's well known that the national media didn't cover this event, but uh, the people of Marion didn't wait around for anyone to come and help. Everyone stepped forward and helped each other through it. And that says a lot about who we are as a community. Our focus at the beginning was uh, saving lives. We were focusing on a clearing path or providing access for emergency vehicles. It was a really hard situation to go through because you see that there, there are a lot of need, people without food, uh, without power. The city quickly established a headquarters out at Lau Park. A hotline was established where people could call if they needed help. 
and people could call if they could give help. Uh, it was crazy for me. Uh, the whole side of my garage was down. I fell, uh, the garage door fell on my car. I drove to the city hall with my broken car. <laughs> Everybody put their own uh, needs aside, and even though they incurred uh, personal uh, losses or damages to their own properties, uh, but everyone showed up. It was a very surreal experience to see the devastation, the damaged buildings. At the same time, it was uh, very heartwarming and encouraging to see neighbors and people coming out of their homes to check on each other, to help each other. People were rolling up their sleeves without being asked and just showing up to help. Just so humbled by it. I couldn't believe that people from outside of our state, you know, they didn't have to do that. We were just so grateful because there were so many people that needed help. He can't put it into words. What that means when you're in kind of a panic situation and somebody helps you out. I used to worry about a tornado coming to Marion, that maybe we weren't as prepared as we thought we were. And then this happened. The city employees came together and we stood together with the citizens and the business owners and the nonprofit groups and we made it work together. I never thought we could get through something like that the way we did. I was so proud. I just wouldn't have ever wanted to go through something like that with any other team. Our Marion team is great, and our residents are the best. As the reality of the pandemic set in, uncertainty took over many aspects of our daily lives. But in true Marion fashion, our city's leaders chose a collaborative approach, teaming up with Marion's community partners to devise and implement a coordinated response that resulted in informed and consistent decision-making and effective information sharing with residents and businesses who were counting on us to guide them through this period of adversity. As isolation and social distancing became the norm and city facilities became closed to the public, we shifted communications, many services, and all public meetings to online platforms. I'm extremely proud of how, despite the obstacles, our city staff and council quickly adjusted to the situation and continued seamlessly taking care of people's needs, helping them solve issues, and providing the high quality services on which they depend. Within a month of the governor's first COVID-19 executive orders, we formed a community-based recovery task force that brought to the table representatives of government, business and economic development, healthcare and mental health professionals, schools, human service agencies, and faith communities. The goal of this group, which continues to meet on a bi-weekly basis, is to put Marion at the lead of recovery efforts by monitoring the evolving situation, responding quickly to issues and needs as they arise, and disseminating clear guidance, useful resources, and real solutions to keep people safe and help them and Marion's businesses navigate through a stressful environment. Here are just some of the accomplishments of the Community Recovery Task Force so far. 4,800 masks distributed to schools, a vigorous social media campaign, and a comprehensive webpage for information and guidance. Televised public service announcements on reasons to wear a mask, a detailed reopening and recovery toolkit for businesses, the community cash program that infused more than $20,000 into the Marion economy to support retailers and service providers, public service announcements and resources on mental health and wellness, special designation of a shared outdoor dining area in the uptown, and we supported the effort to make calls to more than 1,000 businesses to check in and offer assistance, and more than 20 webinars to support pandemic-impacted businesses. And we held a juice box donation drive for the thousands of meals that were served by feeding lunches to youth. On behalf of Marion's residents, thank you to all the members of the task force for answering the call to action and offering your partnership and energy to these efforts. I'd like to take a brief moment at this time to remember our friends and neighbors whose lives were lost and all the individuals and families whose lives were impacted 
by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our hearts are with you. COVID-19 will have a lasting impact on our lives, but the August 10th derecho will forever be etched in our collective memory, not only as the greatest natural disaster in Marion's history, but also as one of Marion's finest moments, the 140 mile per hour winds that swept through our region and left a path of unbelievable devastation proved to be no match for Marion's community spirit. I was grateful for and inspired by the exemplary way in which Marionites united around a common purpose and our shared humanity as we quickly assessed the damage, rolled up our sleeves and attended to each other's needs. As city crews cleared debris and first responders reached those who needed help, Marion's leaders orchestrated a massive and impressive relief effort. Details of our response and cleanup efforts are part of the annual report available on the city's website, and copies of the report will be mailed to all Marion households in the coming week. I encourage everyone to review it, and I want to offer a heartfelt thank you to each individual who shared in the work and collective responsibility. From first responders and city employees who worked tirelessly to take care of people and manage the cleanup, despite damage to their own homes, while ensuring continued services and communicating clear and vital information to the public, to the hundreds of volunteers who canvassed neighborhoods, helped clear debris and delivered food and supplies to people who needed them, to others who donated money and supplies, or the incredible team that operated the Emergency Distribution Center and provided food, supplies, resources, and compassion to thousands. There are so many of you and I don't want to leave anyone out. So thank you, thank you to each and every one of you. The kindness you shared made all the difference and spoke volumes about who we are as a community. Now 2020 was also a year that brought racial equity and justice issues to the forefront across our nation. And Marion was sadly reminded that no community is immune to the impact of racism and hate. Our immediate response was and always will be that hate has no place in Marion. Purveyors of hate don't represent the true heart of Marionites, nor do they speak for Marion. Every individual has the potential to add value to our community. Hate and discrimination of any kind squander human potential. So I ask every resident to stand up to hate wherever it exists and actively work to ensure that all people feel welcome safe and valued in our city. Diversity is a strength that should be celebrated. Marion's leaders have encouraged and invited conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Further, we have formed a community equity and inclusion task force comprised of city leaders and community members with the goal of identifying ways we can do better to ensure fairness, freedom from fear, equality, and above all, justice for all people. Thank you to all the members of the task force for accepting this important responsibility. We have another short video. I certainly think we have a lot of opportunity to do things differently, to make sure that we are truly as inclusive as we can be. And so we are working really hard to make sure we do better. We do want to be the department for everybody in the community. And if there are people that don't feel safe here because of us or for any other reason and we can help, please let us know. And I think communication is the key. I think the Mayor's Equity Task Force is a very good start. I think it's just really cool the involvement we have in this group. Right? We have community members, we have our chief of police, which I think it's a really hard position to hold right now, right? To be the chief of police or to be a police person. He has stepped right in both feet literally and said, we're gonna do this together, right? We're gonna tackle this together. We know that none of us are perfect, yet we can't fix it if we don't work together. We just recently got our mental health crisis counselor. In a sense, we head off where we would normally have taken somebody to jail. She was able to uh, push that a different direction to treatment. We're not out here to take people to jail. We're just out here to keep the community safe. And if we can do it in a different way, hey, I'm all ears. And during these times, we need to have conversations on how we want to move forward. You and I may disagree, 
but we may agree on 85% of items. Let's forget about the things that divide us and let's just come together as a community to really make a difference. Of course, we would need to make sure that official actions are equitable and treat everyone fairly. I mean, that's, that's a must. But I believe that the majority of the change is gonna happen or needs to happen on a person-to-person -person basis. I really do believe that all of the members that are part of the Community Equity Task Force, we will be able to make a long-lasting impact that will make Marion a great place to live long-term. So I'm hopeful of where we're going. Now, 2020 was certainly a year for the history books, but we should all be encouraged by the forward momentum and meaningful progress our town experienced, even while we were dealing with setbacks. In my first State of the City speech six years ago, I challenged our city to reach higher, to ask why not rather than what for, and to shape our own destiny rather than allow others to determine what is good enough for Marion. I'm encouraged by the manner in which we're dreaming bigger and becoming more deliberate in seeking and expecting the best for our community and in setting a clear vision that is creating opportunity and attracting significant investment and earning Marion consistent recognition as one of America's best small cities. Across our city, we can sense excitement and positive outlook as we reach higher and achieve more each day. And while 2020 forced some initiatives to be put on hold, many moved ahead as Marion's strong fundamentals remained unchanged and investors continued to have confidence in our town's potential and a promising future of great opportunities here. Please watch this next video. 2021 is going to show that we're a very resilient community. And I think it's just a reflection of the continued belief from our business community that's here and from investors even looking in from the outside saying, we believe in the future of Marion. We're really excited to help build Uptown Marion into a place, and by that we mean a destination, a place where literally people can live, uh, where people can really feel good about spending an evening, you know, having a nice dinner or, you know, an evening out, and we're particularly excited about the Plaza Project and sort of the ability for that to be the, the spiritual uh, center of the community. In addition to Uptown, we're looking forward to continued development on the east end of the Central Corridor and then the East Town development out at uh, Highway 13 and 151. So it's not all concentrated in one area. We're seeing growth and development all around the community. We put the Strip Center up last year that has Pizza Ranch, Jersey Mike's, and Pancheros. And we started these apartments, uh, the East Town apartments we started last year and they will start leasing in May. Uh, there will be a total of approximately 90 apartments between the three buildings and uh, 13,000 square feet of commercial space. It's the gateway to the city, so it, you know, we want to make sure that it looks very good and, and inviting to everybody when they come to our community. It's the first thing they're going to see and it's the last thing they're going to see when they leave, so it's important that we leave a good impression with them and, and that way they come back. Hopefully maybe they choose to live here. Having the fire station underway, the new headquarters moving along, uh, the library coming out of the ground, being able to open the new YMCA even in the middle of the pandemic and the derecho. Some of these are projects that have been in the works for a decade or more, so it's really fun to finally see those cross the finish line. It's an amazing community and I really um, almost immediately uh, love the vibe of it. Iowa is a small part of you know the U.S. and we're not blessed with great weather. Places where people are just naturally going to come, it's got to be about the community. It's got to be about the quality of life. It's got to be about the affordability and the education and finding a way to make Iowa relevant and attractive to young people. That's really honestly what I am most excited about. Our community is just ready uh, to explode with, uh, with energy and with the right focus on the future. We like to say that in Marion, the sky is not the limit. A lot of people work very hard every day in Marion to make that a reality and to give people the opportunities to enjoy an unequaled quality of life. It's no secret that Marion has become a favored place for people to live in our metro area. 
Hundreds of people move to Marion each year, making it one of Iowa's fastest growing cities and currently the 14th largest city in the state and creating a demand for more housing options, amenities and businesses to serve our population of more than 40,000 residents. For several years, we've witnessed an increase in such investments and 2020 was no exception. We currently have 12 housing subdivisions under development and added 100, 278 new homes or housing units last year as residential construction is taking off, especially east of Highway 13 and north toward County Home Road. This year we'll see completion of a large multifamily residential complex on Fifth Avenue and another in the East Town Crossing. And work will begin on yet another large multifamily complex at the former YMCA site at the corner of 10th Avenue and 31st Street. Businesses across the country and the region struggled and sadly many closed their doors in 2020. Many of Marion's businesses also had a difficult year, but they also held their own and persevered as they shifted their service delivery in multiple and creative ways. We saw more than 40 new businesses open in 2020, including in Uptown, in the east end of the Central Corridor, along highways 13 and 151, and in the East Town Crossing. The, city, the city's targeted efforts and long-term vision of helping the Central Corridor redevelop from industrial uses to more commercial uses are paying off as we've welcomed several new businesses in this area in 2020 and are looking forward to significant redevelopment on other parcels this year. In Uptown Marion, momentum continues to build as the district firmly establishes itself as a regional destination for shopping, dining, culture and entertainment, and cements its role as the living room of Marion and beyond. Aside from this, what sets Uptown apart is that tens of thousands of people live within short walking or driving distances, making it an ideal place for businesses to locate. The district saw 12 new businesses in 2020, and we're seeing strong interest in new projects this year. Work is also progressing on our new public library building, a 52,000 square foot facility that will be yet another landmark and an active hub for residents of Marion and the region, adding to the vibrancy of the Uptown District. Our library is the beating heart of Marion, more than simply a place that stores books. This state-of-the-art facility will serve as a community center and a place for learning and interaction and access to information, technology, and resources for all people. Simply put, community will happen at our library. We're looking forward to the ribbon cutting in 2022. And we've had a series of significant projects in the past few years, but perhaps none as transformative as Broad and Main, an exciting $25 million development covering an entire city block, which will add more market rate housing and commercial and retail spaces in the heart of Uptown. At the same time, the city will finally move forward with the long awaited reconstruction of 7th Avenue and the Marion Uptown streetscape, including construction of Marion's latest placemaking project the Uptown Plaza. The plaza will be located both south and north of 7th Avenue, tying into the Uptown Artway and creating an inviting space where residents and visitors alike can spend time and experience community. We've been planning for these projects for many years and I know the work will cause some inconvenience. So thank you in advance for your patience and understanding as we complete the work. It will be worth it. The upgrades will improve the safety and walkability and overall look and feel of the area. The public and private investments in this area will lead to more vibrancy, ignite additional investment, and positively impact the curb appeal of the entire community. In other parts of the city, the Marion Enterprise Center continues to attract new investment with several large projects totaling more than $17 million currently underway and an additional 19 million of potential investments in the planning stages. And on Tower Terrace Road, the beautiful new headquarters fire station is nearing completion and interest is building for new businesses in this burgeoning commercial corridor. 
Several businesses are already thriving here, and we should hear announcements of more coming to this area soon. In addition to the rebuild of 7th Avenue in Uptown, this year we'll finally see 6th Avenue completed all the way to the East End Roundabout, and a new roundabout will be constructed at 10th Street and Central Avenue. We'll spend a million dollars on asphalt overlay of various streets, and we'll completely rebuild several others. Nearly one third of our streets have been newly built, rebuilt, or overlaid within the past decade. Strong fiscal management is a top priority for our city team, and I'm pleased to share that for the 11th consecutive year, Marion remains in the top tier of Iowa cities with a double A1 bond rating. And this is just a few cities, signifying investor confidence in the city's fiscal management and financial standing. We've maintained a consistent property tax levy rate for the last five years, even as we take care of existing infrastructure, build new inf infrastructure and amenities, and expand services to keep up with the needs of a growing population. As our city grows, we're growing up as a city organization. We're working smarter and are committed to bettering how we operate. We're being more strategic and methodical in our planning and decision making for more efficient, effective, and reliable and credible governance. Our strategic plan, for example, sets a roadmap for all our initiatives, and our five-year capital improvements plan prioritizes more than $116 million in needed infrastructure and community betterment projects. Our Uptown Master Plan will guide development and redevelopment efforts to maximize the potential of our community's core, and our growth modeling program will identify the true costs and benefits of projects to help us direct growth in a manner that will add the most value for the community. Our city is managing the public's resources and serving the needs of residents with consistent, well thought out, and transparent decisions that engender confidence in our city team and promote more private investment in our town. I encourage you to review the details of the city's good governance initiatives in the annual report. And at this time, I would like to pause to convey my heartfelt thanks to the entire uh, city council, the city manager, the city leadership team, all our city employees for your amazing efforts, especially during this past year. It was challenging, but we made it through together and you all pulled together with collaboration and extraordinary efforts. I could not be luckier or more proud to be part of your team. Quality of life has become a hallmark of our city in recent years, as we have added great programming and amenities, including new trails, new parks, playgrounds, an amphitheater, skate park, sculpture trail, and the artway, and several splash pads, just to name a few. These are all part of our promise to give residents the best opportunities for a great quality of life, and a big reason why Marion was again selected as the Iowa League of Cities all-star community. This is for three out of the past four years. But we're not resting on our laurels. Answering the community's call for a rec center, the city invested $7.2 million in this beautiful facility, which opened earlier this year. The unique partnership between Marion Parks and Rec and the YMCA will provide efficiencies and cost savings over time. Not surprisingly, the Y has added more than 4,400 new individuals as members since opening day on January 18th. We're so proud of this facility and thrilled to partner with the Y to boost opportunities for improved health and wellness for residents of Marion and the entire region. Up next will be the development of Prairie Hill Park, the newest addition to our system of more than 600 acres of nicotine-free and tobacco-free parks and trails and the construction of a new pedestrian bridge and artistic entryway feature over 7th Avenue, bringing the CMAR Trail one step closer to reality. And while the bridge will be constructed this year, the artistic elements will be added at a later time. Also in the works are a feasibility study for a new aquatic center to replace our aging city pool and a plan to make Indian Creek a recreational amenity for our town. Friends, I hope you're equally as proud as I am of how far our town has come and what we were able to accomplish as a community in the past year. 
There's no doubt that 2020 tested our resilience and the fabric of our community. But it also brought us closer together. It heightened our love for our town and sharpened our understanding of the unity and community. This unity was highlighted in a myriad ways last year, such as a disaster recovery grant program that distributed $70,000 to help families and businesses and funded food assistance and replanting efforts, or the Splinters Project initiated by high school students who sold sculptures made from tree debris to raise funds for replanting efforts, or the reimagined community programs that resulted in adapted farmers markets, traveling concerts, and Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus on parade through neighborhoods, allowing residents to enjoy them in a safe manner. These are just a few examples of how 2020 prompted us to lead and innovate and strengthened our resolve to continue moving forward despite all setbacks and obstacles on a path of progress and inc increased opportunities for all Marion residents. We showed the world that even more importantly, we showed ourselves just how much Marionites love their town and why Marion is without a doubt the best place in Iowa to raise a family and grow a business. We have many reasons to be optimistic about the road ahead and the bright future for all people and businesses who choose to call Marion home. Everything is possible. A com com commonly used adage in my family is that one hand cannot clap alone. 2020 proved to us that no challenge is too great when we work together with common purpose and when we draw on the power of community. When we set aside differences, when we see the best in each other and believe in Marion's awesome potential, we will be unstoppable. As I say each year, truly, the sky is not the limit. Let's continue reaching higher together. God bless. Thank you. Are you actually trying to just build a blooper reel from the beginning? We are, actually. <laughs> What's going on here? No. Looks like it's not going anywhere. You look like my grandma. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of it then. I wear a mask so we can all get back to doing the things we love. <laughs> can I look at my nose? <laughs> I gotta remember to smile. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> About to let you handle most of these questions. No, 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 no. Crazy. Who's the next Brooke. victim? Brooke. Brooke. Oh, I'm... it's like a therapy session. <laughs> I wear a mask, so we. No swearing, right? Well, the outtake maybe, but. <laughs> <laughs> and he's out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She'll hate me for this. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. I wear a mask because it's a nice hat. That would be very Oh, I love I wear a mask when it's really sunny out. How's that for action shot? How do you like that action shot? Like a pro. I love it. You want me to do it again without the mask? Hi, Pastor Mike. A couple more times. <laughs> but now, now you got to do a silly one like, hello! Yeah, we're gonna, Hi! We'll, we'll forget our part pretty quick. <laughs> All right. A little zazz. <laughs> I wear a mask so these kids can go back to school. Ready? I wear a mask so we can all get back to doing the things we love. Okay. <laughs>
Welcome back. You got your steps in running back up here. Uh, thank you for sharing more of the YMCA here in Marion. It's now a time for the question and answer portion of the state of the city, and uh, we can take questions in the chat function, but of course I came with some really tough ones to start with. And I think one of the hardest questions may be for you, what would you have done differently that you could have affected uh, in the last year? Yeah, of course, uh, you, you know, no one would have wished for a uh, derecho on top of a global pandemic, and we couldn't have um, uh, predicted that. Uh, but there's no other community I would rather have been in than in this community uh, during that time period. Um, the amazing uh, leaders that we have across the board, everyone is working in the same direction, and uh, they collaborate so well together. Everyone just pulled together on, uh, for both the derecho and the, um, the derecho response and the pandemic response. And uh, we, we took a, a community-wide approach to both of those. And uh, it's, it's a realization that none of us have all the answers, and so we pool our, our uh, ideas and our energy together as a community and pull together uh, to get through tough times such as those. So. Uh, I, I really am so grateful for the manner in which Marion pulled together across the board, the community, as well as all the organizations and the leadership of the city um, and our partner organizations um, to uh, work through the issues in a collaborative way and to help our community and all the people and businesses get through it as successfully as possible. So A plus for last year, right? That's my... <laughs> Well, that's great. So knowing that we've got more recovery ahead, what are we looking at for tree replanting in Marion? Okay, so uh, we're now completing our uh, debris cleanup of the trees that were destroyed and we'll be then turning our focus on regrowing our uh, tree canopy. We realized in this last year how important that was, our urban forest, and that's been very uh, badly damaged and uh, it's very important to us. So we'll be turning our attention to uh, replanting efforts uh, uh, led by our city forestry department, uh, and we'll be partnering with uh, organizations in the area and in the community uh, to uh, not only replant the city's uh, 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 tree population that was damaged or lost, and the city lost about more than 40% of mm -hmm. our uh, public trees, uh, but also to help private land, uh, property owners to replant uh, trees. And that, that's a long-term uh, process and a project, and it takes a lot of funding, and, uh, but it, it's also an opportunity you know, to, uh, to do it right. And uh, we'll be uh, collaborating as much as possible with other organizations to, to do that. So speaking of funding, what's it gonna cost Marion to uh, not only deal with the derecho, but also the pandemic moving forward? Um, can you estimate roughly what that budget looks like? So uh, on the, the, the derecho, I, I know our estimate is uh, about $45 million is the cost of the cleanup uh, alone. That doesn't uh, take into account replanting efforts uh, uh, or damage to uh, city buildings, those types of things. So the cleanup is $45 million, and the city's portion of that uh, after the FEMA uh, contribution and the state's contribution is about $6.5 million. And as far as the pandemic, did you receive FEMA funds, um, CARES Act money that has yes. helped the city? Yes. Um, so did the pandemic and the Duray show put you behind on timeline for some of the revitalization efforts you're doing uptown, you know, building a new library? You know, uh, there were some things that uh, maybe in the private uh, sector were put on hold to see how things uh, pan out, but I think that's only going to be temporary and we're already hearing that, these, that those projects that were put on hold are going to be uh, back on track. Uh, as far as city projects, we opened, uh, well, we partnered with the YMCA organization on this facility by investing in it and this, it opened uh, ahead of schedule uh, during the pandemic. Uh, the uh, uh, fire station had some derecho damage 
the, the new fire station that we're building had some uh, derecho damage, so that set it back a little bit, but it's on track to be opened uh, in May of this year. So as far as city projects, uh, we're, we're continuing on with, uh, with our programs. Uh, the, the uptown uh, work uh, that's going to take place over the next couple years, the uh, rebuilding of 7th Avenue and the streetscape project, uh, the central corridor project as a whole is, is continuing. So. Uh, we're, we're continuing with all our programs and projects and continuing to serve the uh, needs of the residents of Marion and uh, 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 build for, for uh, a bright future. I had not seen the new fire station, which if folks have not been this way, you get to see this amazing building plus that. I mean, I thought it was the art museum or something. It's stunning. So you said May 1, and that's fire station number... Well, it, it's the third fire station, but it will be number one. It'll be oh. uh, named number one. It, it'll be our headquarters okay. for the fire department. Very exciting. Yeah. We got a question from the chat function. Thank you. With the pandemic and derecho, do you still see population growth in Marion's future? I do, and everything is pointing to that. Um, Marion uh, is still uh, the, the place where people want to locate. It's uh, it's got great schools, great quality of life. Uh, the city's worked a lot in the past few years on quality of life initiatives, placemaking projects, community programming. Uh, it's one of the safest cities in the state of Iowa uh, consistently for more than a decade. Um, so we, we see that uh, as, as continuing uh, for the foreseeable future. We haven't seen any decline uh, in, in, in growth. Um, and as the population continues to grow, um, of course, businesses are going to follow to serve the, that, that growing population. Uh, as I mentioned in the address, we have uh, 12 residential subdivisions that are currently active uh, in development and building homes uh, at this time. We're seeing uh, growth in the uh, 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 rental housing market and uh, multifamily residential complexes and so uh, that creating those opportunities for people uh, for different options uh, for housing uh, will also continue to draw people here. Uh, you mentioned rental properties and one thing that's been in the news a lot is the issue of Section 8 vouchers and the legislative yeah. action. Do you want right. to comment on that? Well, so Marion has had uh, that prohibition on discriminating based on source of income uh, for quite some time. And I think we're one of three cities in the state that, that, that has that. And uh, it, there's a potential that now that will be prohibited in terms of having that as a prohibition on, on denying someone uh, housing. But the city has uh, registered its disagreement with the legislature? We have, yes. Thank you. Another question from the chat function. Thank you so much. In recovery from the pandemic, how does the city plan to help local businesses moving forward in the future? Well, uh, you know, our approach, again, uh, throughout the pandemic has been uh, to provide uh, resources, to provide information, so that uh, to help to help businesses maneuver through the, 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 this period, uh, and our business partners, the Chamber of Commerce, as well as the uh, Marion Economic Development Corporation, have uh, uh, been really amazing at uh, providing uh, guidance and information, providing um, uh, help in in, in uh, navigating all the government programs, uh, and uh, really guiding the businesses through this period. Another question from the chat function. Thank you so much for sticking with us through our technical difficulties and great questions. Can you please talk about the next steps for the equity task force? Well, the, the equity task force has formed. We've met a few times. We're trying to kind of uh, 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 we're, we're trying to, first of all, get to know each other, which is very difficult over Zoom. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, when we can all be back together in person uh, so that we can get to know each other well, build uh, a working relationship with each other. But uh, at this time, we're trying to determine uh, where we go next now that we've formed and we're, we've uh, decided what 
what the objectives of the group are, and uh, the next steps would be to get to work and to um, decide uh, what areas we want to explore and uh, look for ways that the city can do better and the community can do better well, in Mayor Nick, equity and inclusion. We look forward to hearing more about that. Thank you. And thank you for uh, having the League of Women Voters host the Marion State of the City this year. Quick thank you to our sponsors. The League is pleased to recognize and thank the gold sponsors of Shuttleworth and Ingersoll, MidAmerican Energy, Alliant Energy, the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation, and ITC. Silver sponsors, Lynch Dallas, the City of Cedar Rapids Utilities Managers, the Cedar Rapids and Iowa City Building, Trades, and Hawkeye Area Labor Council, HR Green, Collins Aerospace, Simmons Perrine, Moyer and Bergman, and Blue Sky Productions. And of course, we're going to record this, we hope, and put it out there for everyone to see. Thank you all and have a great day. Thank you.